start with our opening statement from Coach Campy. Well, you know, anytime you win, it's good, and we really needed to, obviously, um, get the little swagger back in this building. Um, I was very pleased. We had a really good week of practice. We, uh, we made some adjustments, and uh, kids did a great job of, of trying to learn them quickly, and I thought they competed and, and really did a nice job. So I'm really pleased. Very good win for us. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we will go ahead and open it up to questions for the student-athletes. Travis, you had a pretty big game last time against IUPI. What are you, what are you seeing against these guys? You know, go for, I think, 27 last time and 47 today. Yeah, I mean, I was just playing. Uh, my teammates did a great job tonight, um, you know, finding me in transition, finding me in the offense. You know, Corey probably knocked a couple guys out trying to screen tonight. Same with Drew Valentine and, you know, Ryan Bass and Duke did a great job of just finding me. After Saturday, I think you went 15 in the first half, four in the second half. Did you any, place any sort of emphasis on maintaining in the second half? Was that anything at all, or did you kind of put that out of out of your frame of mind as soon as that game Saturday was over? I uh, just kind of brushed that off. I mean, I think after the last game, I said something really stupid, like uh, I let them get in my head. Um, that was probably the dumbest thing I've ever said because I'm the only person that can get in my head. There's never been any other team or any other players that have gotten in my head. So I kind of reflected on that a bit and just – you know, didn't know what I was talking about, and you know, I just came out here shooting. I just came out here doing doing what I do in practice, and just putting up shots. And uh, Tim Monzer, the most Corey, uh, especially in the first half, you had a big advantage in points in the paint and then rebounds. Just what led to your success inside? Um, they kept trying to double team and cover Bader. You know, they found me. They had made great passes to me, and uh, you know, they kept hedging out to Bader, doubling him. So when I screened him, I was open all the time. They the guards just did a great job finding me. Neil Rule with Oakland Radio. Travis, you tweeted earlier that you were listening to some Love Shack in the, uh, in the cold tub. Is that going to be part of the pregame playlist from now on? Yeah, I'm going to listen to that before every game now. <laughs> For both players, talk about the, the importance of getting a resounding win like this uh, going in to face one of the conference's best teams on, on Saturday. Yeah, uh, this is a great win for us. Um, you know, we just had to come out and, you know, like Coach said, try to get that swagger back. Uh, a lot of guys stepped up tonight. Um, Duke Mondi, you know, he came off the bench tonight, but he did a great job of, you know, really coming in and crashing the offensive rebounds and, you know, finding finding shots and, and did a good job of not turning it over and stuff like that. So, I mean, uh, a lot of people just stepped up tonight, and, and that's what we needed. Yeah, we, we just took a step forward today. Um, we just did what we were coached to do and come up, come up on top. All right, with no further questions for our student athletes, we'll go ahead and dismiss them. And we'll go ahead and open it up to questions for Coach Campy. Again, if you could, just whenever you ask your question, you know, politely for the folks at home, let them know who you are and your, your media outlet. This is Paul Camp from the Oakland Press. Coach, could you just reflect on Travis's performance tonight and what you think of that as far as the great individual performances you've seen here at Oakland? Um, well, he had one last year where he made 10 against South Dakota State. I think it was 10 of 12, which is a little better percentage than 11 of 18. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he was very good, but, you know, he said something that, that you know, I was very angry with him the other night when he said that about he let them get in my head and I, that that just told me the whole mindset of our basketball team is you know we just mentally you know we were we were in a fog and you know we had we had to as a coaching staff we had to reshape that thinking and we had to make some changes and you know get some things going in a different direction here because we're, we're, we're headed in the wrong way and uh, you know so was glad, I'm glad to hear what he said tonight. And then the other thing he said that I think is very important is a lot of guys got him open. You know, he, a lot of guys did a great job to get him open. Bass did a heck of a job getting him the ball. Monday did a heck of a job. I and mean, Duke had a layup and turned and flipped it back to him for three, you know. They recognized that it was his night and everything was going, and, and we needed that to win. And, and that was what I liked about it is the players recognized it, and they're the ones that helped get him the shots. 
he maybe two times all night did he you know make a move and and you know get the ball and go get a basket by himself. The rest of it came out of the offense and off screens and great passes. So you know that that's what I like about his performance. Uh, Tim Ponzo of the Post, Coach. We've seen several games this season where Oakland has struggled at the end of the first half, but tonight it looked like IUPUI might be going on a run. But you finished there with an 11 to three run to finish half, and that set the tone for the second half when you opened on a big run as well. Uh, what was different at the end uh, tonight? Well, we, we're playing a team that um, probably isn't real deep. You know, they've lost a lot of kids to injuries, and you know, so we knew they were going to wear down. And we tried to increase the tempo in the second half because we we played the first half the way probably we're going to need to play to win against the top teams in this league. But we felt that it was very important that we increase tempo in the second half because of you know they only had seven guys, and we had to wear them out and get the game going up and down. Now, because we did that, they started making some shots, or shots they didn't make in the first half. But the ultimate reason is not to look at stats afterwards and, and analyze. The, the reason is to win. So we won the game, we move on. Mark Jacobs. Mark Jacobs, WXOU. Can you comment on Duke Mundy's play tonight? And it was, was it your intention to have him come off the bench and bring energy to the team? Or were you not expecting his production tonight? Um, yes, it was my intention to bring him off the bench. That's why I didn't start it. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was also my intention to sit in the whole game. But I thought he handed practice very well this week. And so uh, the way the game was going, I would put him out there. And I thought Duke played his, his best all-around basketball game since he's been at Oak. His stats were very similar to what his stats would be in 40 minutes and 25 minutes. I thought he really did a great job, as Travis said, on, on the glass, especially in the first half. He had a tip in that, you know, he's a, he's a man out there, and that's the, those are the things he should be doing. So we just trying to refocus him. And, you know, when you get a transfer sometimes, as I said earlier in the week about Vova and some other players, it takes a while, and, and sometimes it takes sitting on the bench to understand that you've got to do things the way we need them done. And I thought Duke understood really well. The uh, fibers in his rear end that run to his brain did a really nice job of getting the message to him. And his brain reacted, and, and uh, his body did what he was supposed to do. So I was very pleased with that. Is that the scientific uh, term, That's fiber? the scientific. I'm, I'm not sure what it would be. No, he's, he's got very low, low body fat, so if it was me, I think we wouldn't use the word fiber, but since it's him, we'll use the word fibers. Coach, in your role with Oakland Radio, you had success with that with Larry Wright. I, I remember as well, Larry was able to come off the bench in kind of a similar fashion. Is that something that you point to? You point to the history where, where it has worked before? I would have if, if I wanted him to think that way, but I wanted him to think he was never going to play again because I wanted those fibers to work. All right. Now, if you guys probably don't remember this, but Travis Bader sat last year for about 15, 12 or 13 games. He didn't start because he was struggling with his, the shot and it was getting down and getting to him. So we decided instead of doing that, we'd bring him off the bench. And we usually brought him in somewhere around the 17 to 16 minute mark and then never took him out again. But I would say up until the tournament last year, he probably didn't start 12, 13 games. So it's not something that we, that's new. We've done this before, and you know we're not going to change. We'll, we'll go Saturday with the same lineup, and hopefully Duke will, will understand it, and those fibers will keep working. Speaking of Saturday's game, Western Illinois, um, one of the better defensive teams. Um, the things you saw tonight, do you think you'll be able to keep that up against them? I hope so. I mean, you know, we, we, the, we're, we're really good in this building. We've been really good in this building for many years. I don't think we can say a 29-minute aberration uh, the other day, um, you know, I, I mean, it was a slap in the face. And and I think we handled it, you know. But I, I, I mean, I expect to win every time we step on the court in this building. kind of expect to win wherever we go, but especially when we play here. I mean, we've, we're, we're, we're used to winning here, and we, we believe we can't be beat here. I mean, BCS schools are coming here and we beat them. So uh, that's how we feel. and. Western Illinois is coming in here, and we'll, 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 I guarantee you we'll play. We'll be ready to play. I'm being told we're going to have a pretty big crowd. Um, it appears the fans have given up on us. You know, we're, we're not used to such small crowds. And, but uh, I've been told that Saturday is going to be a pretty big crowd, a homecoming game. And, you know, I expect the place to be rocking like it, like it has been for the last decade. 
uh, Tim Hunt certainly was, uh, Coach uh, Bader gets a lot of the attention tonight, shooting outside. Uh, you had a significant uh, points in the paint advantage in the first half and then uh, rebounding for the whole game. You just talk about how, especially Petros was playing tonight. Well, it was a slow-paced game at, at first. And that's kind of how I think if we're going to win against the top teams, that's going to be how we're going to have to play. As much as I hate that, that you know, that's just this year, this team's going to have to play that way. Uh, but what I saw late in that game was Rice walking the ball up the floor and their players resting, and they looked tired. So the first half was slow, pounded inside, get our threes on kickouts, you know, and then we went to, you know, I went to a little lineup, full court press, tried to get the tempo going, we got going, we got the alley-oop for the dunk, and then, of course, typical of this team this year, we, we you know, we're about to end the game right there, and instead we have to do something stupid, and they score the next nine possessions. You know, that dunk happens, we get a stop at the other end, and that game's over. Instead, they get to technical, they get to rest, boom, they make a shot, and all, now they score nine straight times. And that's, those are the things that has killed this basketball team. And until we change that stuff, we're going to be sad when the season's over. We're getting learning experiences, and hopefully we'll learn. Uh, you touched on it earlier. Are you committed to this lineup then for Saturday and potentially beyond? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be real smart on my part. We just won by 20 points to, to change the lineup. You know, I, I know I'm not that intelligent, but I hope I'm not that stupid. Dante specifically, do you think, how do you think he played? I think he it? played exactly how I thought he'd play. Um, and then he finally, you know, he made a mistake to start the second half. We, we came out, we ran a trap, and he was late on rotation and missed it. He should have had a steal and a dunk. The guy just threw a lollipop up there, and he missed it. And then their best shooter made a three. And then, but he came down two possessions later, and he made a three. So I was pleased to see that he let it go. The Dante of old probably would have shot an air ball there. But he was strong enough to come back and make that shot, and that was a good sign. So I thought Dante played 17 okay minutes. All right? I need 17 better minutes Saturday, but I thought they were okay. Anything further, guys? All right, that is the end of the press conference. Again, a reminder.